Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about my Polestar 2 and I also want to talk about charging the vehicle. Now overall my experience of using the vehicle has been 99% from home, so that's my perspective. I've been using my car, using my own char charge point at home and it's been a great experience. I love driving the car, so on and so forth. Everything you've seen in my other review videos still applies and after six months of owning the car I still love it, it's a great vehicle. However, Charging the car when you're away has been a completely different experience for me. So I experienced my first charging situation when I went on my holiday or vacation and I went away to Norfolk. Now, for those of you who are watching my channel from another country, Norfolk is a coastal area. Um, it's quite you know, a, a popular destination for people around the UK to visit as it's near the beach and it's a nice place to go. But it's not one of those places where it's completely out of the way, but it's not close to a large or a major town or city. Um, with that in mind, when I went there, I didn't expect to have lots of charging stations around. However, I was pleasantly surprised that there were a couple of different charging units around and in some of the little areas where we went for a walk or a coffee, I could leave the car charging. Well, that was the idea anyway. My experience from using the chargers away from home was absolutely awful. Now I say that, that it was inconvenient, it was difficult and I had a number of problems. Starting off, when I first got to Norfolk I basically went there with a full charge and I had over sort of 250 miles in the car and by the time I got there I had less than 30% remaining. So I figured okay, it's okay, I've got 30% so I'll have enough time to charge my vehicle. The next day I then went out and tried to look for a charging station. I ended up finding around that area lots of genie point charging areas. Now that was fine and I didn't have a problem finding the chargers. The problem I had was in a lot of these areas where you may have limited signal on your phone, you then have to download the application that goes with the charging stations and every single different charger has a different charging application which is a real pain in the arse. Now I had limited signal which meant it was hard to download the app in the first place. You then have to download the app, you then have to create an account. Some cases you have to add your credit card details, in other cases you have to then kind of uh, add credit to those uh, charges and then you then have to then go through the process of actually plugging in the charger. So before you even get to the stage of plugging in your charger, you've got to get to the point of having the app, having a login, having all those credentials, being able to access your email so you can confirm uh, the email you get sent from some of these companies, and then going through the rigmarole of actually trying to charge the car. So the first point was I had a problem downloading the apps when you haven't got limited signal, that's an issue. Now that's something that you could preempt, I guess, and when you're in a Wi-Fi area, you could download that, so that's not too much of a problem. But then I had the experience of actually charging the car. The first charger I had was a Genie Point charger, a 25 kilowatt charger, and I plugged it in, and it must have taken me at least 15 attempts to get the thing to actually work. The application was terrible, it didn't give you much information, and for those of you who don't know have never used a charge before, a lot of the time, that once you put your account details in, you have to choose a charger that you're gonna use, it usually has a number. So you put that into the thing, and then it tells you, okay, great, you can go ahead and charge. And then when you plug it in, you can see that the system will then tell you that it's charging, or the device itself will actually tell you, visually, that it's charging. And so you give, give them a clue that you know that the system's working, but that wouldn't happen. So I kept doing it over and over and over again, Still wouldn't happen. I then had to close the app, I then deleted the app, I then reinstalled it again and then the second time round, this is I say second time round after about 15 attempts, it then finally started charging. That's what I thought anyway. So I left the charger, left it charging, went to for a walk around the local town, sat and had a coffee and I thought actually what I'll do is just go on the post Polestar app and just see how much charge I've got. Well when I went to the Polestar app it was showing me that the car wasn't charging. So I couldn't work this out, I thought right I'll go back and at this point as well bearing in mind the weather was good right if it had been raining it could have been a very very different situation but luckily the weather was okay so I managed to go back to the car I then check it's not charging so I have to disconnect it reconnect it again and after again two or three attempts it started charging again. So that was my first experience of using a external charger to my home it was a genie point charger and it was terrible you know absolutely awful. And then a few days later I thought actually I've only literally managed to get another 7 or 7 or 8% battery charge so I'll go back again. We went back again to the same place. I actually even used the same charger 
And <laughs> with that in mind, thinking it'll be smooth this time, I just plug it in at work. Well, it didn't. Again, it took four or five attempts for the charger to actually work. And then when it did work, the same problem happened again where it cut off and I had to then change charges. So this time, I actually physically changed charges, went to a different bay, which was luckily it was available, I managed to plug it in and managed to get a little bit of charge. But again, the problem, it was, so, it was so difficult. And I met a bunch of other people as well that had the same problem as me. And they said, you know, normally these things work, but they're having problems as well. So that was my kind of, I was getting quite nervous and I was also getting a bit worried thinking, where am I gonna charge this car? Because there isn't many of these chargers around. We then went to another Genie Point charging place, which was in a different location around Norfolk. Again, had a similar problem where it took a number of attempts to get the car to start the charge, and then eventually it charged. And now that charger was actually a bit better. It worked for a bit longer. However, um, I didn't have a lot of time there. I only had half an hour, so I didn't really get much charge. So at this point now, I've got around about still about 30% battery, and I'm thinking I don't have enough charge to get home. So on the way home, I'm gonna have to get some more charge from somewhere else. So we then decided to go to a services where you'd think, you know, some of the major services, they've got these really powerful um, 100 and, um, is it 175 kilowatt chargers? I can't remember, the most powerful ones anyway. Um, and the Ionic chargers, and I heard really good things about those. So before I got there, I downloaded the app to make sure that I had the app as well, set up my account. And by the way, just to let you know, these Genie Point chargers, you have to put credit, which means if you don't use all your charge, they're stuck in these applications. You just got money sitting in these accounts, and potentially on things you don't even want to use because they're not that good. So that's just a, a point aside. So then I start using, uh, we're going to, the, going to the services and thinking I can use the Ionic, Ionic chargers. And again, I drove into the services and the problem they've got with this area here is that you had a bunch of cars that were being charged and a bunch of other people that were waiting to use the chargers. However, you didn't know who was waiting to charge because they're all sat in bays and the only way you knew was when you physically got out your car, someone would come up to you and say, by the way, I'm waiting for that charger. And then someone else would come up to you and say, yeah, I'm waiting for that charger as well. So there's no ticketing system. There's no way of knowing who's waiting for what. And one of the chargers decided to stop working while we were there. Um, and it was such a pain. There were so many people waiting to use the chargers that in the end, I just gave up and left. So we had to drive out the station. And at this point now, I'm around about 10% battery. So I'm getting really, really worried. I'm switching everything off in the car to make sure that I've got enough power just to get me to the next place where I might possibly have power. And then in the end, luckily, when I had about 2% battery, I managed to go to a McDonald's, uh, a McDonald's um, uh, standard McDonald's on the, on the services area, and they had a bunch of chargers that were there, and they were quick chargers, uh, and within 15 minutes, I managed to charge the vehicle from zero to about 50%. But it cost me around about £30 to do that. So these charges were very, very expensive, but they worked incredibly easy as well. So that's something to bear in mind, that my experience at McDonald's with their charges was actually pretty good. So then I started thinking about this, thinking, okay, so my experience at home is very, very good. Why? Because I've got a driveway, I can park my car very conveniently, and I can leave it charging overnight, and that works very, very well. So if you're driving locally, you'll have no problem charging your car if you've got a charger at home. However, if you are somebody, let's just say that you haven't got your own driveway and maybe you park your car on the road, I don't really see how this system would work because even if you had a charger or you had an AC you're using your main to charge your vehicle, you would really struggle to get the cable A from the, your room or your house to the vehicle uh, and B, it will take forever to charge. Um, so you would need a charging station itself set up at home, but if you haven't got a driveway, it, it's just not going to work. So if you haven't got a driveway, I strongly recommend that you don't buy an electric vehicle because I think you'll really struggle. Unless you know of a very, very reliable charging area that you can go to, charge your car and then bring it back. But simply trying to charge it on the road, I just don't think will work. And my experience of that, and I've stayed in places where I've tried to do that, People aren't happy with having cables running across the road and you know it, it's just very, very inconvenient. So I'd seriously think about that before you buy another, uh, buy an electric car. The other problem as well is that if you have potentially got some sort of disability and getting these cables in and out of the cars, they're quite heavy cables and sometimes they can get incredibly dirty. If it's raining, they get really, really dirty and you've got to like wash your hands. 
And the reality is that a lot of these charging stations that are out in the public, they don't have any covers. So unless you go to a specifically well-built one like Shell, where they actually have roof covers, if you're in a suit or you're going to work and you need to charge your car, most of these chargers are just out in the open and you'll get wet, covered in rain, and then you've got to deal with dirty cables that you've got to handle and put in your car and put back in your car and take them out of your car. And if it doesn't work, you then got to you know, go through that rigmarole of trying to sort that out. So, yeah, it sounds like I'm kind of having a bit of a moan here, but I think it's important that people talk about these problems because although the Polestar 2 is a fantastic car and lots of these other electric cars like the Testas and things, they're all great. Um, my experience with charging my own car has been pretty poor. Now, would that help if I was in, living in a big city or I went on holiday to somewhere where there's loads of chargers? Of course, I'm gonna have more selection, but the reality is at the moment is that there's only like 2% in the UK of, of drivers that have got electric vehicles, and I struggled sometimes to get a charger. What happens when that goes to five, 10, 15, 20%, and by the 2030, I believe that most vehicles are expected at uh, that time to be sold are only gonna be electric, so most vehicles we'll see will be electric vehicles on the road. And with the current infrastructure, the way that I see it working, I can't see it working, that's the problem. I don't see how it's gonna work. Unless you're charging your vehicle at home, I think you've got a, a potential problem if you're relying on public charges, especially about reliability and actually just getting the bloody things to work. Um, they're very time consuming and it's not as straightforward as simply driving to a forecourt and char plugging it in, it charges. You've gotta get the app to work, you've gotta have your phone working, you've gotta have a signal, you've gotta have credit, you've gotta have all these things in place before you get to the actual point of plugging the charger into your car. So these are a few things I wanted to raise with you today and I think it's important you, you're aware of these things before you go into buying an electric vehicle thinking that it's all great. These are just a few points I wanted to raise with you. Um, I hope you found this content useful. If you've got any questions on actually charging the Polestar 2, which is the vehicle I've got, or any other questions around charging, leave them in the comments below. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel and I'll catch you in the next video.